just living your life and kind of this like scared and fear, fearful place is not healthy, but also you need to speak to people and talk to people and get out of that place with conversation, a hug and, or even, I mean, what y'all are doing, putting notes on people's cars because you never know what they're going through. My name is Alex Lewis, and you're listening to Words Matter, a podcast by Car Window Poetry. Every other Thursday, we invite you to hear from someone who's using words to make the world a better place. For our second episode, I'm chatting with singer, songwriter, producer, Julius Tunstall. Not only did he create the theme music for this podcast and recently release his debut album, Sir Cries A Lot, but he also happens to be one of my best friends in the whole wide world. I'm really excited for you to hear Julius' story, so without further ado, let's jump into it. Here's my conversation with Julius Tunstall. Today on the show, we have my friend, uh, one of my best friends in the whole wide world, Julius Tunstall. And Julius, thanks for thanks for being on today, bro. Hey, Alex, thank you so much for having me, bro. Like, this is uh, it's an honor. Dude, so good, man. Well, I'm super excited for people to get a chance to know who you are. Obviously, you and I know each other really well, which is one of the reasons why I was super excited to have you on the show today. But for those who don't know you, who are you? Uh, my name's Julius Tunstall. I'm 23 years old. I'm from Burlington, North Carolina. I'm a an artist, a musician, and a producer. And I just love making music that makes people happy and makes them think and puts them in a better place. I love it, dude. And so for you, like, how did you get started writing music? I started writing music when I was in about fifth grade. I had a journal that my dad bought for me, and I just kind of started writing, like, little poems and different little things on this attitude guitar that they had bought me for Christmas. And I would just take like the beats on like a Casio piano and just like rap to it or make up songs about this and that. So that's, that was my, that was the beginning. I love it. And like, what was the, I know, cause you could have just stuck with like an instrument or something like that for you. Like what was it about words and actually using words to like portray what it was that you wanted to convey? Like why words? I think one of the big reasons I'm using words is because, like, I, I really enjoyed the feeling that I got when I, for some reason, when I sang an emotion and and I really could come across when I was singing something that I was saying. And those words held a lot more weight when I put them to music. And I felt like I could be completely honest when I was singing. And so every word that I would say would mean something to me. I would really dive deeper into I was kind of a shy kid, so like one of the uh, the conversation of having music back me up was like super important for me and using words in that way. And so when you began writing music and started to kind of dive deeper into that, what vision did you set out to accomplish with your music? Did you have like something in mind that you wanted people to feel or experience or kind of what was your vision when first starting out? To be honest, first starting out, when I first started like really taking music seriously, I didn't really see um, the future. But as I kept writing music that my friends were saying that like, oh, dude, this actually sounds really good. Or this, this actually like this hits home for me. <clears throat> I think that one of the big things that I saw for myself is that I wanted to be on a certain platform that people would really understand what I was saying and not necessarily be like a huge music mogul or anything like that. But Definitely being able to get out there and people hear me in different places in their life and be able to relate. And that's still my goal right now. I still want to make music and do it full time. And I would love to be going on tours and playing at people's houses. And it's still all very new to me right now. I'm still getting it figured out, but I would love to be playing out more. That's my that's my first goal is to play more. And then we'll see what happens from there. Yeah. Well, bro, I'd say that, you know, you're off to an incredible start. You just recently launched and released your new album, Sir Cries A Lot. So congrats, bro. That's amazing. Yeah, dog. 
And for this album, what stories were you seeking to tell? Like, what were the different, I don't know, I think there's a number of different really important messages on this album. And so what were those different stories that you wanted people, you wanted to invite people into as you were writing this album? Well, one, I thought that right when I graduated from high school, I noticed that my emotions were very uh, different and I didn't go straight off to college when I graduated from high school. I kind of hung around in my hometown and started working in a church and noticed that a lot of my friends were going off to college and that I was having conversations with people like, you should be in school or you should be doing this, you should be doing that. And I kind of had this like emotional transformation where I just noticed that I was just crying a lot. <laughs> like I just noticed that I was having a lot of emotional breakdowns and like started having panic attacks and and then my parents actually split up right after I graduated from high school and I was dating a girl very seriously and that didn't end very well. And so they were basically so cries a lot is my post high school to right now, like to 23 years old from 19 to 23. That is what Sir cries a lot embodies is my early twenties and these stories. One, I mean the intro being sad song and then t- take it out is about my parents splitting up. Glad you out and banana pudding are about a bad relationship. And see, I'm ill. Twenty one and I'm ill is about mental illness and dealing with that. And no name place is about a situation that I was in when I got into a little bit of trouble and kind of wanted to get away from that, but then facing it head on. And then the end of the album is about my current girlfriend, actually, and just hanging out with friends and actually making that turn of finding happiness and being okay with not being okay it's a lot of it's a lot of space to cover (laughs) yes it's a lot of content (laughs) but i think that's awesome like and i'm sure that in creating this album there are moments where Mm. you wanted to quit or you didn't think that like your music mattered a whole lot you know and even in dealing with some of those emotions like i'm sure there were different things that you know just like having doubts. And so were there different people who spoke in your life? And if so, like what kind of words were they speaking over you that helped give you life through that process of creating Sir Cries A Lot? Definitely with this whole process of Sir Cries A Lot, it's been, I mean, like I said, some of these songs are three years old. And I think that um, one of the big things that a lot of people were telling me, I mean, you, my friend Taylor, my parents, my sister and just a lot of really close friends just telling me that you are saying things that people are afraid to talk about. And you can be the first person to have a breakthrough for someone. And these things that you're so open with, you need to say this to people because they will value it and that people will um, take it and know that they're not alone. That was my biggest thing with Sarkaz a lot. I wanted people to know that they're not going crazy or that they're alone and their struggles um, did you recognize while you were writing, like, did you recognize that these were things that like, whoa, I don't hear too many people like saying this stuff? No, I didn't. I thought <laughs> a lot of the songs I was like, man, I don't, this isn't a good song. This is too, this is too heavy. Like, or this is, this is too much. But like I said, people were telling me that people were going to really value what I'm saying and that I can't give up on being completely myself. And but yeah, I, I had no idea that like this would be something very against the grain. I was just, like, was hearing it with my own constructive or not even really constructive, just like <laughs> bringing myself down, you know, ears with like, oh, this isn't that good. But people were like, oh, no, it's you're saying some really cool things here and people need to hear. Them, so don't stop. Stop saying you want to stop, you know? Yeah, I love that. And I think, too, that I know I, I've experienced this, that. I think there's, you know, definitely that there's definitely that part of it. That's like you write and you want people to read that or listen to it or experience it in some way and that it's going to impact them. But also, I think that process of writing is also very therapeutic for Mm -hmm. the writer as well. And so while you are writing, how did it how did it feel for you? How did you did you see a change in yourself as you were beginning to actually get some of these things down on paper and then eventually being able to sing them out loud. There was definitely a change. I I think it was really when I hit the moment of writing, take it out. I remember sitting at the piano and I had the hook in my head after my mom and I had a conversation 
And I just was like very, very upset and very like beaten down. There's actually this like cool piano at our church that I work at. And I walked into the room and I just started playing some weird chord progressions. And then all of a sudden I got the, are you taking this out on me? Oh no. What happened to the time? It's very natural. And I remember in Sir Cause a Lot fashion, just very much crying at the piano and just being like, I have to go home and record this song right now. And that was kind of the turn because I had a few songs already, but that was actually the song that made me want to make it a full album. That was that was a huge moment for me. Are there other lyrics on the album that stand out to you? You know, it's something that not only you needed to hear, but you feel like other people can need to hear as well. Definitely. On the first song, Take It Out, I say, you did nothing wrong. Don't think that everyone's out to get you. I know that you want answers. I want answers too. And then at the end, I go into this like full thing of like asking my mom personally all these questions of like, uh, you know, this divorce and feeling like I didn't really have answers and neither did she. But it's kind of like at the end, you can kind of hear in the background, I'm saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. And it kind of like goes across the, like if you have on headphones, it's going from like the right ear to the left ear. And then at the end of it, it says, I love you with all my heart. That's a huge moment for the album. And I'm ill. It says, uh, this, the bridge actually, which you actually talked about. And I think it's really cool. I think people don't understand what I'm saying in the bridge. So it says, uh, there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. Sometimes there's some things that we have to go through. There's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing wrong with you. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Just breathe and be. And just living your life in kind of this like scared and fear, fearful place is not healthy, but also you need to speak to people and talk to people and get out of that place with conversation, a hug, and or even, I mean, what y'all are doing, putting notes on people's cars because you never know what they're going through so those are two huge moments on the album that i love well dude i i really just want to honor you as a brother as a friend as an incredible musician just in having the bravery and the courage to put those words on the paper and then record them and share them with people i know that there is definitely there can definitely be those moments of is anybody gonna listen to this is anybody gonna be impacted by this and I can just say as me and I may be biased I don't care but I remember listening to those lines that you just referenced it's okay just breathe and be and I know for me like those are words that I need to hear often because I am very much for anybody who's into the Enneagram like I'm a three the achiever the performer very focused on doing and having an image of success that's conveyed to other people. And oftentimes where I find my true self is in those moments when I allow, I allow myself to just breathe and be. And so, yeah, man, I just want to honor you and thank you for being willing to share that uh, in the form of an album. Yeah, dude, it's been, it's been a great journey and I'm so glad people are listening to it. And I hope that they enjoy it. And, and I hope it's a timeless album that people can go back and still have that same feeling I always have when I listen to it. So yeah, thank you. I love it, dude. And so I have a few final questions that I ask everybody. And this first question is really just based on this idea that, you know, the things that we consume, they help make us who we are. And so I want to know for you, like, what are you consuming right now that you love, that you're really into? Like, it could be a ice cream flavor it could be a book it could be you know a favorite movie like whatever it is what are the things that you tend to be going to right now that are giving you life right now i'm super into music business studies (laughs) it's really weird and really heavy but i'm like loving learning about how the music business works i don't necessarily want to be signed to a label and there's so many awesome ways that you can use your platform and not be ran by these corporations that generally don't really have great expectations for you but i'm learning i I think i'm really into like this knowledge thing right now where i'm like trying to get all this knowledge about music business and i'm actually reading a lot more than i ever have been and that's been like amazing for me because it's quiet and i'm in my own thoughts and i'm like in a quiet room with a blanket and i'm just like 
in there and I like feel like I come out of that room and I'm just like, I can write 20 songs now, you know, but music business has been like, I've been nerding out about some, some numbers and learning how to do it all. So that's been something that's been giving me life. I couldn't do it, but like, (laughs) I'm glad you're doing it, bro. That's so good. And last question. I want people to, I want people to check you out. I want people to be able to follow along with you. So where can people go to follow along with you and your work? All social media is J Tulius, J T U L I U S, and that's Instagram, Snapchat, and Julius Tunstall is my name. JuliusTunstall dot com is my website, and I would just love for you to come check me out on Facebook. Uh, we'll put show things up there, and also on the website, I steady put up Instagram videos that are about music and my recording process, and also really stupid videos that I zoom in on my face a lot and. If you want, if you like those things, please follow me. And uh, they're always fun to watch. So, dude, they are. Well, bro, thank you so much for being willing to come on today and share your story. And I'm so excited for people to go check out Sir Cries a lot. If you're listening, go check it out. I promise you, it is worth it. And I love how you use words to encourage and really, in so many ways, just say me too. So, thank you, bro. Thank you, brother. Today's episode was produced by me, Alex Lewis, and our awesome music was provided by the voice you heard today, Julius Tunstall. If you enjoyed today's episode, I encourage you to leave us a five-star rating and review on your Apple Podcasts app. That's a huge way more people can learn about the show and be impacted by these conversations. I also encourage you to take a screenshot of you listening to this podcast and share it on your Instagram story. Together, let's prove that encouraging words and small acts of love can make a big difference in the lives of those around us. Until next time, you matter, you are enough. Remember these words when times get tough. Thanks for listening.